Hi, I'm Robert Osborne. I'm back with my co-host this evening, Sean Noriega, professor at UCLA and an author who wrote this really interesting book titled Shot in America, Television, the State, and the Rise of Chicano Cinema. Sean helped program this year's Race in Hollywood series where we're taking looks at how Latinos are portrayed in films. Welcome back, Sean. Thank you, Robert. Now, our next film is a TCM premiere and it's titled Walk Proud. It's from 1979 and it stars Robbie Benson. Why did you pick this particular film? Well, this is one of a number of gang films that came out in the late 1970s, and it's notable uh, in a number of respects, but first of all, because Robbie Benson was cast as a Chicano gang member. And uh, the, the filmmakers reasoned that they needed a bankable star, right. uh, which uh, fortunately none of the other films uh, followed. Uh, but the film is also interesting because the uh, filmmakers wanted to go for realism, so they hired an, a number of gang members uh, from the Venice area where the film is located uh, to work as extras. But what they didn't do was pay attention to the rivalries in different neighborhoods. So when they went to Culver City to shoot a, a scene or when they went to Santa Monica, inevitably there ended up being uh, conflicts between the Venice gang and the local gangs. And ro apparently Robbie Benson didn't help matters uh, when he flashed a V sign um, at the Culver City gang and that led to a, an altercation. And the media covered all of this uh, quite extensively. So it created a, a lead up and a lot of, um, uh, of anxiety and concern leading up to uh, the release of a number of gang films in early 1979. It's included uh, The Warriors, Boulevard Nights, which we'll see next, and then Walk Proud. We have to bring up somebody here who is a friend of mine because he wrote this script. Yeah. You know, Evan Hunter, who died recently, but also he was the author of Blackboard Jungle, another gang yeah kind of related movie. A terrific it's, writer, wrote The Birds for Hitchcock. Well, he also wrote another film we have seen uh, called The Young Savages. And in many ways, uh, under the name Evan Hunter, but also Ed McBain, he pioneered the police procedural. Right. Um, so it's interesting to see him showing up uh, in the late 70s right. writing this film. And, and in some ways, the film has a 1950s feel to it in uh -huh. terms of the approach to uh, juvenile delinquency and gangs. Uh -huh. You set that up very well. Let's have a look here from 1979, released by Universal, Walk Proud. Interesting film. And I'm back here with my co-host, author, professor, and director of the UCLA Chicano Studies Research Center, Chan Noriega. Chan is here to talk a little more about this film, Walk Proud. Now, what was the reaction to this movie when it came out? Well, the, and all that kind of thing. By the time this film came out, uh, two earlier gang films, The Warriors and Boulevard Nights, had already opened and resulted in shooting, stabbings, and really? the theaters. Um, but also uh, considerable protest by the... On Chicago, this film. Yeah, against the earlier films and against this film. Uh, in particular, uh, students from the East Los Angeles College formed a gang film exploitation committee and they sent around packets to other campuses and to community groups uh, trying to organize protest against the film. Uh, the Chicano Cinema Coalition, which was a group of young filmmakers, also put out a position statement and threatened to uh, initiate lawsuits against the, uh, the film industry. So the, the film really drew a, a, a very strong response on the, part of the, on the part of the community. Did that do some good? It seemed to more or less bring a, a stop to a number of these films. There were probably about half a dozen films that and came And there weren't out. any other ones to offset that. So all the yeah. films about Latinos then were yeah. gang related. And the interesting thing is that when the protest groups put out their statements, you see for the first time a public call for Hollywood to depict Latinos as uh, families rather than as gangs. Uh, and what's interesting is by the end of the 80s, with films like Stand and Deliver, you begin to see Latino filmmakers answering that call. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So this did have a, even though it's not a great movie, certainly, but it did have an yeah. effect on, on the way future movies came out. And there's, there's also a brief cameo appearance by a young actor named Luis Reyes, who would then go on to write one of the first encyclopedias of Hispanics in film. It's called Hispanics in Hollywood, an encyclopedia of film and television. And it's a fascinating resource. Sounds like it. Well, let's move on. Up next, Chana and I are going to be back to introduce another film from 1979, one he mentioned earlier called Boulevard Nights, one he feels is very important to see as we look at how Latinos have been portrayed in films. <laughs> 